Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at iOS 8 and we're going to specifically take a look this week at uh, 1Password and the sharing service that's been upgraded in uh, iOS 8. Uh, so I've had a, a number of requests from people asking about uh, the 1Password integration and so what I thought I'd do is use 1Password as the example uh, for the integration that now has been built into iOS 8. Uh, the beauty of iOS 8 now is that various apps can uh, include extensions across the sharing features that are built into uh, iOS 8 so that you can get to these applications in a much easier way um, across the various uh, services and things inside your different uh, apps in iOS 8. So uh, it's really a great addition. Uh, so you can see this is 1Password. Now what 1Password has done now is made it so that you can get 1Password uh, for free. Uh, and then it has an in-app purchase for uh, various features. So if I just tap on in-app purchase here, you can see that you can unlock uh, pro features for $9.99. Uh, actually, I think there is a cost to 1Password up front. Uh, so uh, I've already purchased it, so I'm not sure exactly what they're charging now. But uh, anyways, it just gives you an idea of how that works. So you can add a pro uh, set of features for $9.99 to it. And uh, it really is a uh, it really is a great a great application. Uh, it also integrates with Touch ID, uh, which is really nice as well. And as you'll see, uh, this will radically change how you handle passwords and things inside iOS 8 if you choose to use it. And I know uh, there's LastPass, which does a similar thing. So if you've got LastPass, uh, a lot of these things will translate uh, translate over. So let me just go ahead and uh, open One Password just so we can go right into it. And so when you come to 1Password, uh, obviously the idea behind 1Password is that you have one password that you put in, and then all of your other passwords are behind that 1Password, so that all your passwords then are secure. And so uh, the beauty of that is, is you can put in uh, extremely long passwords that you don't even remember what those are, because 1Password will generate those passwords for you, uh, and that which makes you more secure on those websites. And you only have to remember the 1Password to get into this application in order to use it. So let me go ahead and put in my password here, and then uh, we'll get into the app. Okay, now I've put in my password, so I just tap the lock there going to authenticate and it unlocks the application and so this is the inside of one password and so this is I have a working database going on here uh, you can see that we have various categories that you can use to store information I've got a, a logins category I've got a secure notes area where you can put notes in for things that you want to remember but you don't want to uh, have anybody else have access to I've got a credit cards area that secures my credit cards and puts all the information I would need to fill in in fields on different websites in there. Uh, I got identities where you can put in people and all of their information. So when you come to those websites that ask for that, it's right there. Uh, I've got other passwords, software licenses, uh, databases uh, maybe that I've got, and email accounts. You can even put in the settings for your various email accounts. And so there's a lot of things you can add. If I just tap the plus over here, you can see these are all the different categories. You can put in your social security number, passport information, reward programs, uh, membership, all kinds of stuff that you can put in here in various categories. And uh, once you put those categories in there, then you can start to organize them here at the side. Uh, for instance, uh, software licenses. So any software that you own, you can come in here and put your software licenses in here so that you can remember those. Uh, again, these are for apps that you wouldn't uh, have purchased on the Mac App Store. So that, that way you can put that information in when you reinstall those applications somewhere else. Uh, one password also has a uh, organization area where you can organize your different things into folders. You can see I created a folder for banking there, and there's one for imported items. And you can also use tags where you can tag different things. And I've tagged uh, some software bundles and things because I re maybe remember what was in there. So I can just go to those tags and see what was in those uh, various bundles and uh, have that show up. So we've got one for hardware. So you can put tags in there as well, which can make it uh, a lot easier to uh, get across the various uh, things that you've got set up. Uh, another thing that's built into 1Password is a web browser. So if you just look at the little globe on the bottom, you can actually go to a web address here and 1Password will fill in uh, your password information for you. Now I'm not even going to demonstrate this because actually it, uh, you're going to probably end up using Safari uh, for this now with the new extension. It works out really nice. So I'm just going to tap uh, to go back here. You can see the little key on the bottom. That's where you put, that's where you'd put in your password. Let me just go back here. Uh, now, the important thing is, is now that we've got this set up, you would go and just add your different passwords in here. Uh, and I'm not going to go into super detail with that because I want to show you the unique features of iOS 8. But if you go into settings over here, uh, you'll notice a couple of things. With the um, pro features, uh, you have the ability to add various vaults. So you can add um, vaults for different password uh, types. So maybe you want to have a, a password type that gets you into 
uh, things like your network and stuff like that, and you want to be able to share that, uh, you could set up new vaults that you could then share with other people who have one password so that they can then just have access to those passwords you want to give them to have them log in. Or if you've got multiple users on an iOS device, you can create different vaults for them so that each user has their own vault. Uh, there's different ways that you can go ahead and set that up. Uh, if I just tap the I here, you can see that you can actually sync this vault if you want to. Uh, and once you hit start syncing, you can sync it via iCloud or through Dropbox. So that way it is available on all of your devices. So if you make a change on your Mac, it'll show up in your iOS device and vice versa. Let me just go back here. So you do have the option for multiple vaults. Uh, you can also set up sync if you want to. If you just tap on sync, you can again start syncing and, and set that up. You can set the display on whether you want to conceal the passwords. And I would recommend that, just conceal the password so if anybody's looking over your shoulder, they don't see what the actual password is. Uh, and again, show rich icons, you know, which are the nice icons inside uh, the application. Uh, then you have some settings for the browser, too, where you can uh, auto-submit logins, auto-fill logins, uh, and that information. Again, you probably won't use the browser as much as you used to have to in the past. Uh, and then there's uh, just some information on the Pro features. You get more categories, you get the custom organizations, multiple vaults, and some advanced items that are in there. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that. So uh, again, and then let's hit advanced real quick so you can see you can troubleshoot, use the iOS keychain. Uh, you can have a prompt to open websites when you actually click on an item inside 1Password. Um, I usually just leave that off. And you can create a backup as well so that your passwords are backed up. What I want to do is go to the security, security area here. And so what you can do in here is change the master password if you want to. Uh, you can request, have it request the password after a certain amount of time. Uh, and then lock on exit. I would leave that on. So every time you exit one password, it automatically locks. So you have to put the password in again next time you go, uh, come into it. Uh, that way, in case someone else picks up your phone, you don't have to worry about them having access to your passwords. Now, uh, with uh, Touch ID now, this becomes less of a hassle than it used to be. Because if, as you can see here, I can enable Touch ID so that uh, I'll, basically it'll request a fingerprint after two minutes and it will lock on exit still. But all I've got to do now is use Touch ID to unlock it. I don't even have to use that one password. Uh, so that really is a great feature. As you'll see, it saves a lot of time. And then you can uh, clear clipboard. So you want to make sure you set that up before you get started. And uh, now that you've seen the settings, you kind of get a feel for the app overall. Uh, once you've got some passwords in there, now those passwords become available to you uh, through the different sharing services throughout your iOS 8 application. So let me just come back to the main home screen here. And uh, let me just show you again. If I go into 1Password, you see how it's locked again? Now it asks for Touch ID instead of the password, and just putting my finger on Touch ID unlocks it. So again, uh, really smooth, a lot easier than it used to be. Instead of having to type in uh, your 1Password, it just makes it a lot smoother. Now, let's show you how this works uh, kind of across the sharing services. So let's go into Safari. And here I am in Safari on my Google account. And so I want to be able to log in there, uh, but I don't want to have to type in my login all the time. If you just tap on the little Share button down here on the bottom, you get the new uh, sharing window that pops up. And now what's neat about uh, some of the changes they've made uh, with this menu, uh, first of all, you notice there's AirDrop at the top. And so it will recognize any AirDrop uh, devices that you have nearby. Uh, once Yosemite comes live, uh, that will show your uh, Mac desktop as well, which will allow you to share files back and forth between your iOS device and the Mac, which will be a, a great addition and an easy way to get things on and off your iOS device. You'll notice across this first row here, you can share with various services, and I'm going to show you uh, how to do that in a minute. Uh, but then down below, you see where we've got this add bookmark area and all of this. You'll notice I've got a 1Password icon there. Now, when you first start, you may not see that right away. You just need to tap the More area right here and enable the 1Password uh, icon service right there for the activities. Now, you can actually move it up. So if you think you're going to use it a lot, uh, you could actually move it up to the top so that you don't have to scroll through uh, the uh, number of things that you've got there. And with 1Password, you probably will. So if you're using this, you might want to move it up there. And if I just tap Done, you'll notice that now it's the first thing in the list. Now, the beauty of this is, is now I wanted to log into this. Let me just cancel for a minute. I want to log into this screen. I don't remember my password because I set up a complex one. All I need to do now is just tap on the Share area, tap on 1Password, and you'll notice 1Password comes up. It asks for my fingerprint, which I put on there. And then it asks me, which login do I want to use? So I tap the appropriate login, and it fills in my password for me. And then I can just tap Sign In. Asks if I want to save it. I'm going to say never because I don't need to do that anymore. And now it's logged me into YouTube. 
and I'm actually in my YouTube account, and there it is right there. I'm logged in. So a real simple, fast way to get logged in, and this really uh, really is a great addition. It speeds up the time, makes it a lot easier to get, uh, to get inside of your uh, various applications. Uh, now, another thing on the sharing area, let me just pop this up since we're looking at the sharing service. Uh, across the top here, number uh, various apps are now integrated into the sharing service. And depending on how the developers put the apps together, uh, we'll determine where they show here. If I just tap on more, you'll notice these are the various services that have plugins uh, for the activities area. And all you need to do to enable them is just turn them on. Uh, just like anything else, uh, you can move them up in rank if you want to. You know, if uh, OmniFocus, I want to move that a little higher. You know, you can just move them around and order them the way that you want. Uh, when you're done, you just tap Done. And uh, so now I've got those services on there. Now what I can do is I can actually add uh, whatever I'm working on, I can share with these services. So for instance, let's say I want to capture this in my journal. If I just tap on Day 1, Day 1 actually puts the link in there and then puts location and everything on there. And then I can just type my journal article in here, my entry, put post, and it'll post it to Day 1 for me. Uh, just like that makes it simple. Uh, I can do the same with any of these other services if I want to. I could do it uh, with OmniFocus. Let's say I've got a task uh, that I want to do related to this particular website. And so what it's done is put that information in there, and I've got notes, project, context, everything in there to help me set up an OmniFocus task based on this particular website. And I can save it, and it'll put it right into OmniFocus. So you can begin to see the power that the uh, sharing uh, feature here has built into it, where beyond just what it used to do, where you could do a text message, mail, Twitter, Facebook, now other applications are able to plug into this. And just like your Safari extensions you might have on your desktop to do these things, now they're built right into uh, iOS 8. Again, with Evernote, uh, the same kind of thing. If I tap on it, uh, it'll ask me to sign in. I'm just going to cancel that for right now. But it allows you then to put that information to Evernote if you want to as well. So let me just show you one more uh, thing. Th this uh, sharing uh, service works across your various applications as well. So if I go into Photos, and uh, let's say I've got a photo that I want to share. Uh, so let's just go up here and grab a photo. And let's say I want to share this photo. Uh, across the service. If I hit the share item here, you'll notice that it goes ahead and checks that photo. And then I have a lot of options now of what I can do with that photo, including, again, look at my various extensions that I've got here again. I can again go into the photo area and turn on the services that I want to have that are related to photos, where people have written plugins for it. So if I wanted to do that, again, I could put it in my day one journal. Say I want to have that in there. I could type out a post and then post that to day one if I wanted to. Let me just cancel that out. So as you can see, the sharing uh, service is pretty powerful. If you scroll down the bottom down here, uh, you can see these are some of the things that are activities that are related uh, to the photos uh, area in the sharing service. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea of how powerful that is. So this is really a great upgrade. Uh, really makes uh, using iOS 8 a lot easier, especially for productivity and multitasking. And uh, it'll probably save you a lot of time. Let me just go home. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.